In a clear example of do as I say, not as I do, Isaiah Salabar, as well as Daniel Adams, demonstrate that, and they make it perfectly clear that they don't mean to do what they tell you to do. As a matter of fact, it's clear they cannot do what they say they do. A lot of us teach, don't go looking for demons. I'm here to tell you, go looking for demons. Go looking for demons. Jesus sent the disciples, not in the church, he sent them out to go cast out devils. You'll never find in scripture Jesus saying, wait, you're only going to find him saying, go and make disciples. So we have to stop waiting around for the demons to come to us, and we need to go out and drive out demons in the highways, in the byways, at Starbucks, at Kroger's, at Walmart, at Whataburger, at your mother-in-law's house, in Jesus' name. You can cast out demons anywhere. I don't know if you caught that, but he says, go look for demons. The question is, and you could just kind of peruse through some of his videos, I don't ever recall seeing him going to look for demons. I see him going to a church and demons showing up, which we don't even see that in the Bible. We don't see demons actively going out looking for people to cast them out. So when we look at the example that Isaiah gives himself, we don't see him going out on the street. We don't see him going to Starbucks, to Walmart. We don't see him going out into the rough neighborhoods where there's clearly demonic activity. We don't see him going to the crime-ridden, drug-infested neighborhoods where kids are being sex trafficked or what have you. We don't see that at all. We don't see him going to even an abortion clinic and delivering demons there. What we have is a case of clear pharisaical hypocrisy, meaning this is who I'm, I'm supposed to be, this is who I claim to be, and I never do that. I've even put out the offer to come and join me, walk through the streets, one of the tougher parts of Dallas, just walk through the streets and let's share the gospel you can cast out demons if you so feel the need to. Obviously, they declined me on that offer. But they don't have to do it with me. They can go do it themselves. They're not shy of a camera. Go take a camera with you, iPhone, uh, Android phone, whatever it is, and go and video yourself casting demons out. The problem is that's a little too dangerous, and we don't, we don't do what we say we actually want you to do. I'm showing you guys a little uh, appetizer here. He has literally hours and hours and hours. I'm like, bro, send me footage. He's like, I don't even know where to start. I mean, there's literally so much footage on his YouTube channel of the power of God in action. Now, what's interesting is that he has an interview some time ago with Daniel Adams about some of the examples, the miracles that are caught on tape. There you go. Yes, 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 yes. That's it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You got tongues, you know that, right? Yes, yes. Amen. Praise God. Have a great day. The problem with this particular video is that the miracles that he's citing, one of these, this is a paid actor that we've known was used by Catherine Crick. She delivered the same person from, I guess, presumably the same demon presumably for the same going rate. Everyone out in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Yes, you will leave her. Get out. Get out. Every one of you. Every one of you. You you will go to the pit now. You will go to the pit now. You failed your assignment. Not the panel. You gotta go to the pit. Yeah, go. I don't know what the going rate is for paid actors to have a demon cast out of them is but whatever it is she's met that and speaking of paid actors it makes you wonder how come these demons seem so calm even though they seem angry there's just something different about these demonically filled people versus the natural normal people that you see on the street what is this no no come on I'm telling you! Get away from me, bastard! Not that I'm advocating for profanity, but you don't even have to be demon possessed nowadays to just throw out some some colorful words, some f bombs, some this words, some that words, words that you could not say in front of your grandmother, or nowadays people do say in front of their grandmothers, but. You never see a demon filled person using profanity with these people. Maybe it's because that would not survive the algorithm on YouTube. Maybe it's because that particular video would get demonetized and their channel would get flagged for using profanity. 
or maybe it's because they don't want their sanitized seam to be sullied by profanity. Either way, it's just not natural to think that people who are of the devil, who are being de demonized, oppressed, possessed, however, whatever terminology they want to use, it's just not natural to think that none of these people are actually using profanity and saying vile things. <laughs> Stop. Uh -uh. I'm scared. Uh. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> Stand still. I bind your feet to the ground. Look at the servant of the Lord. Ah, look at the man of God. Ah! To your knees. Oh no! Ah! Ah! To your knees. Ah! To your knees. Oh, Stay sorry. there. Stay there. I'm going to hit you. Then come on. I'm going to kill you. Come on. I'm kill you. Come on. I'm going to hurt you. Come on. Come on. I can't. I can't. And then we've got him casting a demon out of a woman who is supposedly violent and wants to hit him. But the woman is not that violent at all. But we see every day, all day long, all over the country, we see people acting out violently. But never do these demonically filled people ever act out violently. They never attack them. I'm not advocating for that. It's just a wonder how they seem to find the nicest of demons who never curse at them, use profanity, and who never violently assault anybody. Well, the reason is, is because it's one big act. Paul says that this sort of activity is going to happen. As a matter of fact, he says how that these people, such as the Daniel Adams, the Isaiah Salvars, that they'll come with these disguises. Look at the disguise that Paul says they'll come as. He says, no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Therefore, it's not surprising if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness, whose end will be according to their deeds. And so, yeah, they're wearing costumes, too. They come disguised, not as some cartoon character or some superhero, but they come disguised as angels of light. And and thinking of this makes me remember there was a uh, there was a video, a movie, a Marvel. I think it was Iron Man, where one of the characters was pretending to be some tough guy, some guy with powers. Come to find out, he's just some drunk guy stationed away somewhere with a camera being broadcast. I'm an actor. Just a roll. The Mandarin, see, it's not real. He didn't have the power. He didn't have the ability to do what he said he could do, though there was some sort of more dark, sinister force behind him. That kind of reminds me of what we're seeing today, which is which takes us back to what Paul was saying just before he gets to verse 14. In verse 12 of chapter 11, Paul says, but what I'm doing, I will continue to do so that I might cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the matter about which they are boasting. And that's what we're doing. We are going to expose them, let folks know that their ministry is not of God. It couldn't be. Why? A true ministry of Christ is not sanitized like this. It is actually out there on the streets. He makes a point about what Jesus says in Matthew 28, but it's not what Isaiah has in mind, or at least not what he's saying. In Matthew 28, 19, he says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Isaiah didn't understand that our job is to go and make followers of Christ. That's how you drive out demons. When the spirit of the living God is in you, then there can be no occupation, no occupying of any demon, no oppression, no demonization whatsoever. That's why we don't see that any time after the founding of the church and all the people groups have received the Holy Spirit. We don't see mention of people having demons and need to be cast out. We see James saying to resist the devil and he will flee. We know there's going to be demonic activity, but our guard, our seal against that is the Holy Spirit, which is why John says in 1 John 5, 4, he says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith, our faith in Christ makes us overcomers and the world is not going to harm us. Greater is he, that's the Lord, the Holy Spirit in us than he that's in the world. Notice that he that's in the world is in the world, not in us. And so while we have these guys out there who are being complete hypocrites, who are playing, masquerading as uh, ambassadors of Christ, who are playing church, who are pretending like they are actually delivering people who are using these fake actors. As a matter of fact, bad actors at that while they're doing that, let's do what we're called to do. Let's do what we're called to do and share the gospel. And in doing so, the true deliverer will be in them. That is Christ. Amen.